Welcome, 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 be holy, be perfect community. Thank you for tuning in. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he shine his face up on you and give you peace. May he heal you in your body. May he heal you in your spirit, mind, and body. May you be blessed, truly blessed through healing, uh, through the relief of pain. May God bless you and keep you. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. May the blessing of the Lord be up on you. We continue uh, in the study of the servant of light and the servant of darkness. And today we will finish up First John. First John, we will finish up the letter of First John. We are now in First John chapter five, part four. And as we can see that this letter is to teach us how to live in the light of God's word and how to avoid living in the darkness and under the prince of darkness. I just want to clarify something when we talked about uh, the spirit of God and the witness of God in the earth and in heaven. Let us not misunderstand that, that there are three gods. There, are, there is only one God. There is only one God. Only one God. We have only one God. And so let's make sure that we don't get uh, a misconception on the fact that it's three gods. There is not, not three gods, it's only one God. And that is the Father, our Lord, our Lord and Master, the Almighty. He was manifest, he manifested himself. He revealed himself in different ways so that we will learn and have a pattern. But there is only one God. Thank you for uh, understanding that. Verse, first John, verse six, five, sixteen. If anyone sees his brother committing a sin that does not lead to death, the extinguishing of life, he will pray and God will give him life. Yes, he will get grant him life to all those whose sin is not one leading to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. So here I I just have to say there is a sin unto death, and that's the blasphemy, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. We know that uh, Jesus teach us that himself, that uh, to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, to um, deny the Holy Spirit, to uh, accuse uh, the Holy Spirit of something that we know that we are doing or the devil is doing, and to make the Holy Spirit out as evil that is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit so that's a sin that uh, people just have to go to God and for themselves because the Lord says that there are sins that you you just can't get forgiveness for so we need to find out what those are and live accordingly and so he say that when we uh, see someone and hear uh, here he's talking about committing a sin that does not lead to death, and that's a sin that requires the punishment of death uh, in this world. In this world, so someone could be beating on a person, or somebody could be raping. So, what is the penalty for those sins? If somebody is uh, committing murder, you know, what did he say? If it don't extinguish the life, if it extinguished the life, then the Lord said, uh, you know. That sin is not going to be, uh, uh, the sin uh, does not lead to death. That if it leads to death, then uh, he's saying, don't, don't pray for that person. Why is he saying that? I have no idea. You know, but if he said, then that's what we should do. A lot of times we are trying to uh, uh, ask God uh, for something that is not according to his will. So we need to find out what his will is in this matter here. So uh, do we pray for murderers? The Lord says here that if he's extinguished somebody's life, you know, why did he say don't pray for them? Why, why is that? Because that is a crime, and that's the, the punishment for that person is death, you know. So we, we, um, we, we have a, a kind of warped way of looking at uh, God and his mercy. So each individual need to go to God, you know, or their spiritual leader and find out, you know, what sins 
are forgivable and what sins are not. And it is pretty plain in the book of Leviticus. We don't study the book of Leviticus because we get so hung up on the fact that it's talking about the ritual service in the temple. But after you get past uh, chapter 19, even in 17, I think it begins, it goes into the holiness code. The holiness codes are the codes that we should be living by. And uh, a lot of people say that those are the codes for the Jews. Okay, but God give us some codes too. That, and when we look at the no eye laws, yeah, they fall under the same uh, the same heading. So we need to learn what, what we should do and what we shouldn't do in the Lord. And the only way we're going to do that is study his word. Moving on. 1 John 5, 17. All wrongdoing is sin. That's what it is. All wrongdoing is sin. And what is sin? Sin is lawlessness. And there is a sin which does not involve death that may be repented of and forgiven. So he's saying here that there is a sin, you know, that can... Um, that involves death that can be forgiven. But then there are other sins that involve death that cannot be forgiven. So let's just make sure that we understand and know what that is. First John 5, 18. We know absolutely that anyone born of God does not deliberately and knowingly practice committing sin. Not creating crime scenes. If we live in God, look at that image. If we live in God... We know that we shouldn't be sinning because what? God don't sin. Jesus don't sin. We know that if we are led by the Holy Spirit under the leadership of God, what? We are not sinning. We, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is not leading us into sin. He's leading us into righteousness. But the one who has, the one who was begotten of God carefully watches over and protect, protect Christ's divine presence within him preserving him against evil and the wicked one does not lay hold don't touch him get a grip on him or touch him see if but if one who had was born of god carefully watches what do you mean watches carefully not sin carefully don't do things that are lawless what is lawlessness sin is lawlessness so god is telling us look whenever we do things against the will of god in rebellion of god well we commit a crime scene we become guilty under the law and government of god it is just as simple it is not that heart just picture yourself at a crime scene that they are investigating you they are investigating me why because i have committed a lawless act yes when i speak evil of someone boom a create um a sign a crime scene has been created and i'm being investigated by the court of heaven evidence will show that i did that then what i will be punished i will be punished that is the law of god now you may not have your head cut off but you may have some kind of sickness in your body as a consequence of that sin that's why it's necessary that we repent first john 5 19 we know positively that we are of god and the whole world around us is under the power of what of who under the power of the evil one so when we walk out of the will of God, we walk into and under the power of the evil one. It is so simple. How simple is that? Look at the image. If we stay in our bubble, yes, I said bubble. If we stay in our bubble, what is the bubble here that I'm talking about or referring to? The bubble of the word of God. If we stay within the boundary of the government of God, in that bubble, we will not be under the power of of the evil one once we step outside that bubble we can call it the green zone yes 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 i was in iraq okay okay yes we step outside the green zone when we step outside the green zone danger 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 you know danger 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 you know we're in danger what danger becoming under the power of the evil one why because he controlled everything outside of the green zone so we need to stay in our bubble <laughs> yes yeah, stay in the bubble stay in the bubble and do not why because when you create a crime scene what guess what if you don't immediately repent 
You don't have to worry about walking outside the bubble. God is going to put you outside the bubble because there is no sin in God. See, and that's why he say what he say. First John 5, 20. And we have seen and know positively that the son of God has actually come to this world and has given us what understanding and insight progressively to perceive, recognize, and come to know better and more clearly him who is true and who is true, and we are in him who is true, who is true in his son, Jesus Christ. And when we say in his son, we're simply saying we are in God, the Father, and we are one. Why are we one? We are one because the breath of life that he gave us and it has been transformed from darkness into light. This man is the true God and life eternal. Now, we're, we're not, this, uh, God is not a man. God is not a man. God is a spirit. And those that worship him, serve him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. So when we say worship, worship means obedience. See, we have this thing that worship is, singing and humming uh, and clapping and music and all this stuff. But true worship, true worship is obedient to the word, the plan, the will, and purpose of God. That is true worship. That is true worship. Now, we may enhance that <laughs> through singing, but the true worshiper is the, wor is the one that obeys the will of God and walk in the plan of God. That's how simple it is. So people can sing lyrics all day long and still be under the what? The rulership of the evil one. Why? Because they don't have any obedience to God. They just like singing. They like attention. They like being in the spotlights. You know, everybody, everybody now that, you know, the praise team uh, is almost uh, overshadowed the word of God. Why should that be going on? Why? Because, well, you can figure that out yourself. Nothing should be above the word of God because the word of God teaches us how to live. The word of God teaches us who God is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Let us learn. Let us truly learn what it means to worship God. Let us truly learn. learn. See, we must be in Christ. And I put this uh, image here so that, you know, when we're in Christ, we're in Christ through what? Through our thoughts, through our actions, through the spirit. It's a spiritual thing, a spiritual thing that happens to us. Uh, and if we're not, if we're not uh, led by the spirit of God, we will never understand that because it's a spiritual thing. It's actually a spiritual thing. Uh, the carnal mind cannot receive uh, spiritual things. In, in fact, the Bible says that the carnal mind is against and fight against uh, those things that are spirit, those things that are of God. So, 1 John 5, 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols, false God, from any anything and everything that would occupy the place in your heart, uh, which is due to God from any sort of substitute for him that would take first place in your life. Amen. So be it. This is the end of the letter of John. Now, listen to what he say. He said little children. But remember, there are different levels of growth uh, and degrees of growth in the kingdom of God. So little children, lads, fathers, men. Same thing, women. Let's not get uh, too hung up uh, on the gender deal. Um, but because the word says he, we use he. Uh, and that's, that's just the way it is. You know, that's the word. Little children, keep yourselves from idols, from false God. And what are false God? Anything and everything that would occupy the place in your heart due to God. Now, what is due to God? Our whole heart. <laughs> it should be nothing in our heart. He says, serve the Lord with your whole heart. With your whole heart. So there shouldn't be any spaces and hideouts and closets. 
For we said, sir, the evil one, the spirit of darkness, the prince of darkness, and think we serving God. No. Our whole heart has to be surrendered to God. That's just how plain it is. You know, we got closet Christians. <laughs> okay, don't go there. Yes, we have these things where we think we can hide under the couch, under the table, you know, but the Lord going to expose all of that. And when we open our mouth, remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will do what the mouth will tell on us. The mouth will speak. So put a little pressure on someone and out comes what's in their heart. Well, we just thank you for listening and we thank God that he has given us such a, such a wonderful training and learning experience of the servants of light and the servant of darkness in the epistle, the letter of First John. We thank God for that. It is just such a wonderful thing. And if you, if you, uh, if you didn't uh, have the time to watch all the videos or whatever, that's just fine. Just go to your Bible. Just go to your Bible and read the Word. Study the Word. Study the Word. Study the Word with the intent, the intent of your heart, the intent of your heart that you're going to do the Word, and you'll be so surprised of the revelation that you get from God. God don't give revelation to people that read the Word with no intentions on doing it. Uh, and that's just the way it is. God is love. God is love. And in him there is no what? No darkness. None whatsoever. So let us live in the light of the Lord. Live under the government of God. And be servants of God. Servants of God. Servants of the Lord God Almighty. El Shaddai. El Elyon. Elohim. So we thank God. God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise, God. We just stand in awe of you. We stand in awe of you. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. May your mercy on us endure forever because we know that you are from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord.